Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Human Colony Hukalo TV Saturday webinar. Today is April 2nd, 2016. And um, welcome. Welcome in. I'll let uh, Valerie uh, introduce everybody. Good morning, everybody. And yes, welcome to our webinar. And welcome back, Jim. Um, it's been about three weeks since he's channeled, and we're so happy to have him back. And in our room today, we have Bianca. Carolina, Krellick, Ray, Sarah, Shear, Will, and myself, Valerie. And Jim, would you like to introduce your group there? Yes, I have Angie, Mark, and Ray today. We don't have a lot of people. A lot of people today. I think they think I'm still out. <laughs> well, that's okay. But that's we have okay. Plenty on this side They'll too. Be coming back. <laughs> All right. And Jim, what would you think that you would like to channel today? Or is there anybody wandering around? Um, I don't know who's coming through. I just, uh, in my meditation, I asked for the best possible people to come through to give the best possible messages. But we did have some people requested. Mary, Jesus, David, Solomon, um, who was Lakesh, Takur. A dragon. And who else? Anyone else? Someone on chat says they would like a dragon to come through, if possible. Oh, a um, yeah, Bianca's dragon. She's got a she's got a new dragon. She wants to say hey to. Oh, has she already spoken to this dragon? Is it a draconian? It must be. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm Maybe not she can sure. type well, to me on the side here. Most dragons are draconian in nature. She has not spoke to him before. Lots of muse on draconians. Lots. So, okay. There you have it. Those are the people that have been requested, or the aliens and the spirits, etc. So, I would just let who comes through, come through. I know that there's some people waiting to come through. I don't know who they are right at the moment because there's too many of them. But, um, I would do it slight meditation and um, whoever comes will come and have a wonderful time um, I have a, a favor to ask make sure you keep your questions not too personal so that the information can help a multitude of people instead of just yourself because this is going out to a lot of people and you want a lot of people to learn and a lot of people to get messages because in, in some cases, it's very important for people to hear uh, what they have to say about, about uh, popular issues. And um, I love you all, and you're wonderful people, and I will be back in a little bit. But for now, I will bring someone to speak to you. Thank you, Jim. Have a wonderful time. Greetings, I am Takar. I'm only here for a brief moment to answer a few questions, but I know that there are some things that are on your mind. So I came through just to answer some questions about the colonies and things of that nature. I know many of you are going through new hybridizations, and some of you are wondering if you're going to the colonies at this time, and you're wondering when the next government meetings are, things of this nature. So I will give you a little bit of overview on that right now. First of all, we did stop some of the uh, colonized visitations 
for a little while since there was an attempted takeover by the, the Zeta Grays. However, that has been uh, stopped. And now we are just cleaning up after that situation. Only one person was seriously injured, and they are recovering very well. There was actually 17 injuries altogether, but only one was serious. So therefore, it was pretty much a failure for them. Yes, we were prepared in some ways. The Octorians uh, sensed ahead of time with some information from other federations and other uh, species that they were going to try something and so that there was a plan in fact in effect for when they came about so it was foiled very quickly the other thing is we are going to start bringing back people to the colonies in April we have not yet started it will be a few more days however the t they will continue to bring people back to the colonies very shortly things are almost back to normal. We have been working a lot with the weathers of the Un United States right now. Many, many storms, floodings, tornadoes, things of this nature. And it's been very difficult to keep track of all the different people in harm's way. So we've done the best that we can. Instead of trying to lessen the force of the tornadoes and rains and things, we have tried to keep people out of harm's way as much as possible. This is successful in many cases. You will notice that there is not as many deaths or injuries as there used to be in the past. For one thing, your technology is greater on how to build homes and things of this nature. But the other thing is we are taking people out of the way. The other thing is we are now is there a problem? No, I'm making it easy to read. Ah. For now, we are just getting ready to start bringing people back to the colonies. But first, we must deal with the weather situations and take care of that first. Is there any questions at this time? Yes, I do have a question. Um, this is yes. from Slava. And he says... He would like to ask about a dream that he recently, okay, just a second here. He recently remembers like someone was congratulating him with a birthday on March 14th, but when he woke up, he realized that March 14th was a week ago and that his birthday is in August 16th. I thought, why do I remember this moment? Perhaps it's a birthday of a there hybrid child. Yes, it was the birth of a hybrid child, that's all. Not a, that's all, but that is what it was. And okay. so he was being, coming aware that a hybrid child was born. It was of a Syrian nature, which is very unusual, so it was fourth density. It is doing very well. I do not have much information on that at this time. Um, he would like to know if it was a boy or a girl, or can you tell that much? It was a boy. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, he would please, love to visit. Please he find said, a name for this child so that you can do the ceremonies when the time is right. Okay, he says he would love to visit the children and their parents and to be a part of them if they would wish him to be there. We are going to start doing that service again very shortly. Perfect. Thank you so much. And now You're Cher? welcome. Many of you visit the nurseries on ERA and in other areas on ships. So therefore, that has been discontinued also in temporarily. But now that will also pick back up. Okay, that's wonderful. And the Cher? next meeting of the governments is in late July or early August. That's all we know at this time. Thank you. That's great information. And Sheer, if you're ready. How are you? How am I? I am fine. Uh, Thank you. Among... Yes, you will sing. I am doing very well. No 
one on our ship was harmed. There was an attack on the Colony Ones, which is one of the colonies that we have here. However, the other Colony One around the Asian area, what area was harmed a little more. I see. And is it like um, a cause for a war or something like that? Or No. We would not start a war with the Zeta Greys. They just wanted to stop our progress with humanity, stop ascension, stop us from helping, and they wanted us to listen to their agenda, which is keep everything status quo, which is not what we are doing. We would prefer to keep humanity moving forward so that they can join with the galactic federations sooner than later. I see, but according to galactic laws, is it possible for you to do something in return? Like Yes, it is. They, ha they are being held accountable. Mm -hmm. What actions are going to be taking against them as far as punishment, we do not know. That is between them and the Galactic Council. Okay. Um, I just want to tell you that um, thank you for everything that you do and much love. Much love. And thank I you. hope to speak with you soon. And just wondering if all the different hyperizations that I'm having now, how everything is going okay. Actually, your hybridizations are numerous, and they are working together very well. Um, the one Fendorian hybridization has actually been the strongest, although you may feel the uh, outcome of it the least. And there is a reason for this, which I will explain to you in private. I see. And did I start the Andromedon? Yes, the Andromedon is now in progress. Okay, thank you, and I will speak with you very soon. Much, much, much love. Much love to you as well. Okay, thank you. And now we have, uh, Cre uh, excuse me, yeah, Krellick. Hello. Greetings, Krellick. Yes. Um, good, good morning, Dekur. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, I have three questions. I will keep it at three. Um, I was I remember hearing information from Rob Gothier about a canine species in the Pleiadian system trying to connect with humanity. Yes. What well, well, what is it, their names? What do they call themselves? Oh, you mean the other civilization, or they do you want to know the name of the canine civilization? I want to know the name of the canine civilization that is in the Pleiades system. Oh, the other canine system. Yes. One moment, please. They are called Conchel. Conchel. Yes. Is there... Well, my second question is um, about... You, you were talking to me about a portal... Did you, are you able to explain further? Are you able to explain any further on, on, on that? What, I already told you where it was at. What else did you want to know? What's the progress on it? One moment, please. Kishom Wata. Aria Kandia Santu. It is at 30%. Open. Get out on this. Thank you. And my elite. I cannot hear you are breaking up. However, I understand that this vortex is important to you, and it is important to many people in that area. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask, 
I find that I have an interest in being a defensive person, a person that defends people, someone that deals with security. Is there anything on the ships that deal with that? Of course. Many of our security people were in action just these last few weeks. Yeah, is, there any, is there any way that I could maybe learn about, about that next time I come up? Yes, you can learn about many things. I am sure. I do not know their agenda for you when you come to their pl planet. However, I do know that they are anxious to teach you many things. That's uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Is there other questions? Um, yes, we have Will next. Greetings to Kerr. Much love. Much love to you. So I noticed, I noticed about a week and a half ago, maybe it was longer, I it's hard to remember that there was this really major thunderstorm coming through Austin and I felt the need to send Reiki and the Holy Fire and then as soon as I started I sensed you and your ship using the Holy Fire to control the the weather so one if you could talk about that and then how can other um, energy practitioners volunteer their usage how can they communicate more with you so they can you, you can use their energy as well? Whenever there is any event of this nature and you send your energy to the yeah, event yeah. Or, to, yeah. or to the ship, it is very helpful and helps with the energy. That is what we have done. We've taken the energy that is being sent to us and we converted it to help with the event. Do you understand? The holy fire is an act of engaging spirituality in helping with the control of natural events. And this works very well, especially when the belief systems are intact, that you are helping and that you are going to make a difference. Does this answer your question? So if anyone wants to be involved, if there is an, a storm system, tornado, anything of this nature, send to us your holy fire energy, your Reiki energy, whatever energies that you possess or can call upon, and we can use that energy in favor of getting results to cure the storm or change its pattern or change the results of what it could happen with this storm. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Uh, within two minutes of when I started sending, the, the storm dissipated. And yes. I also got messages that there were several people that were really, really helped by, by the change. Excellent. This is very true. When a storm of that magnitude dissipates that quickly, Many that were in harm's way have been saved. Either they have been saved by their own lives or the destruction of property. Amazing. Thanks for your clarification. Much love. You are welcome. Namaste. Much love to you, Will. Okay, Sarah, you're next. Hello, Prakur. Could you hello. speak up a bit, Sarah? I say hello to Kerr. Hello to Kerr. Yes, thank you. Sarah, yes. it's good to hear you. Good to hear you too. Um, there's an energy that is being quite persistent at the moment, trying to connect with me while I'm watching you guys. <laughs> trying to figure out who is it. One moment, please. Thank you. It is a it is a past life relative. Is there a name? It is a female. How did you know? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> the name is Sienna. 
Sienna. Yes, it may, may not be an Earth past life, but it is a past life relative. Does she have this, a message or something? She wants to contact you for the toning portion. She was also a toner. Oh, nice. Thank you for that. And You're welcome. She was actually a Native American. Okay. And um, there has been another energy around me for the last maybe a week or more. Um, and I haven't really gotten a name from this energy. It just It's just been around. Is it a heavy energy? No, not too heavy, no. One moment, please. When does it come most often? Because it is not with you at the moment. It usually comes in the morning. Ah, one moment, please. Kanchun Tifian. Beria Fastron Sata. He said to just call him. It is an. Elemental spirit. Elemental spirit. It is an elemental. Which element? No, it's an elemental like a fairy or a wood sprite. I'm not sure which. But they are wanting to thank you for the work you've done with the earth. And oh. they have other things for you to do. They would like to speak to you about working with certain particular species of trees. Okay, yes. Right. That is what they want to contact you about. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Right. This is very important to them. Mm -hmm. I do not have a name for this particular elemental, but it is a female. Thank you. I'll pass the mic. Much love. Okay, Carolina, if you're ready. Hello, take care. Greetings, how are you? I'm okay, thank you, I love you. I love you as well. <laughs> take care, um, I just found out that my Yael child was born uh, recently. Um, I'm very happy for that. And um, I was wondering if you could ask my girls to uh, give, him a, give him a name, please. They have given him a name on this side. They prefer that you give a name as well. Oh, right. Uh, can, can you say the name? Oh. Poratan. Pardon? Poratan or Poratan. The way it's Poratan. spelled could be pronounced either way. Poratan. I think it's Poratan. Poratan. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. I, I Go ahead. What, what, what's, the, what's the meaning of that name? I will ask the you yield one moment. I will ask Pentium one moment. Okay. Land to Sky. Oh, beautiful. I love that name. I really love it. Excellent. Um, I have another question to ask you. I recently found out that I was connected with the Elohim in with regards to um, helping them with other worlds, Agarthas. Uh, my question is, was that in another past life or is it me doing some astral work at the moment? No, it was just in a different timeline. Okay. Um, not in a past life, but in a different timeline that is not exactly, it's parallel to your timeline, but not in this, not within three timelines. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. You're and I'm, I'm happy to, to see you again. I am happy to see you as well. <laughs> okay. I'll pass the mic now. Excellent. Okay. I have a question from a day. And she would like to know if all the help that we've been giving to Gaia 
if it has helped at all, or what is the state of health for Gaia? Absolutely, it is helping. All the energy you can give to Gaia does help. Um, Gaia is still in the state of flux. We predicted that she would be out of this quite a long time ago. However, with all the different things that are happening in the solar system, in the galaxy, and in the universe, there is still some tension on the Earth. And therefore, she is still working to smooth things out. Many changes have already occurred in the energies of the Earth, uh, but there are still more to come. But it is a, it has been a time of great tension for humanity. Even those that are in very positive realms have been affected in some ways, not necessarily negative, negatively, but have been uh, caused to be brought down for a period of time, but it is not without purpose. So it has been all right. Thank you so much. All right, David, would you like to go? Hello, Takur. Yes. Nice Welcome. to talk to you again. Nice to speak to you as well. I would like to know uh, if you have any recommendations how I could uh, reach more people with my own work, uh, my own channelings, and um, teachings in general here on Earth. Yes. Um, I know that what that you have been pursuing this. Meditation will help you because it does attach to other people. Attach yourself in meditation to those that you would like that have a, a meaning to be with you, meaning that your message will touch them. Do a meditation and intention that all the right people come to you and that after they hear this message that they spread it to others. This way your name will become better known and people will tune in. Now the other thing is this. Make sure that you are hooking up through the right connections. Um, if there are those that are very much helping you, make sure that they connect you to the right places so that more people can come to you. Do you understand what I mean? Um, I'm not quite sure um, Then you talk about uh, making sure that others uh, connect me to more. How exactly would I go about that? Well, you will get people that will want to help you with what you are doing. Right now, you must connect through Google Hangups, Hangouts, and Skype, uh, and different ways of this nature, but there will be others that will help you in the future. <laughs> oh, I see. Thank you. And do some meditations that the right people come along to do that for you. All right, I will. Thank you. Namaste. Okay, is there anyone there with you, Takur, that might have a question? Can we ask? I do not know. Is there okay. anyone in this room that has a question? Behind you? Yes, come closer. You must speak into the mic. Hello, Takur. Hello, how are you? Well, pretty well. Um, I felt a bit rough this past week, and I was... Curious about maybe any insight into why I've been super, super tired and I'll sleep a full night's sleep and then I'll end up sleeping two, three more hours in the middle of the day. Perhaps you are traveling in your sleep, going to places that you are visiting, trying to find answers for your ailments while you are not awake. Do you, are you aware of any astral travel at this time? Were there any dreams? There was some dreams. Uh, recently, yeah. Perhaps these are places that you have traveled and they are trying to give you advice how to become whole. You do have some work to do on that. It is a good thing that you do, though, seeking out the advice of others. This is admirable. 
Is there any other question? If not in your room, then Dan has one, please. Very well. Hello, Takur. Yes. Recently, there has been a lot of illness. Uh, Jim has been ill. A lot of people, uh, even myself, experiencing this uh, upper respiratory uh, kind of thing that seems to be going through the uh, spiritual communities uh, the hardest. Um, can you elaborate on any of that? Is there something going on? Is this just a, like a massive attunement that we're all going through at the same time, some kind of ascension flu, or what can you comment about? No. Mother, I, Mother Gaia Earth is going through many changes. It has disrupted the physiology of many spiritual people because they are, not, they are paying more attention to the spirit than they are to their own bodies. Therefore, they have been brought down so that they pay attention to the spirit in a different way so that it nourishes the body as well as the spirit. Now, connection and grounding were disrupted and this is part of the reason for this. You see, grounding was more difficult at a certain period between late January and early March. So therefore, some of those that were very spiritually inclined could not ground properly and found it very difficult to stay well. Okay, and all that energy has stabilized since then and we're all doing quite quite better now. Some people are still... It's about 79% stable. There's so, still 21% uh, instability on the earth at this time. Okay, so everybody should be well on the men soon. Nothing to really worry about then. They shouldn't be so alerted or alarmed. It's just... We foresee that by June it should be down to 5%. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, Takur. We know that you didn't want to uh, stay too awful long. We thank you for all the yes, information. I must go now because others are necessary. Thank you so much for coming with to be here with us today. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Hmm. The earth has changed quite a bit since I have been here. Oh, welcome. To whom are we talking? I am in the lineage of Jesus. I am David. Oh, welcome, David. So nice to hear you. I'm not going to stay long, but I do want to point out a few things about the comparison between our age and yours. I've not been back to the earth for many centuries, but when I was here, I made many mistakes and did many things that were not right. But God still forgave. Do you know why? I was able to get close to God again. Is because I realized that the soul is God and that he was with me even in my times of great mistakes. He allowed me to come forth again after all that shame and help me to forgive myself. And many of you are going through very similar things. Not that you have killed or have hurt anyone or have lied and cheated. Well, I'm sure some of you have. But I was guilty of all these things and more. But connect to your God spirit. This is your strength. This is your only way to know 
the real truth. You may hear a lot of things from a lot of people, but you and God are connected in a true singular line of light and love. Connect to that, and you will know the truth, and you will not have to listen to a lot of people with a lot of different ideas. You will know that within yourself, you are complete with that connection. And that, with that, I want to say much love. Is there someone, or many someones, who have a question for me? We do. Will, would you like to go? Yes, I would. Much love, David. It's been a and long time. Much love to you, Will. Yeah, Sheer and I have a connection with you, which is also relevant to Abraham, and we we aren't quite clear on that connection. Abraham David was in help. the line of David as well. Yes. So we are connected, and Jesus was in that line as well. However, we are different aspects, and we are different souls. My soul was not like the soul of Jesus, although we are related. Do you understand that? Yes. But your connection to Abraham is about the law. You have been people that follow the law and have been taught much about the law. And it is time for you to see the law for what it is. It is a boundary. It is a guideline. It is not solidified in your actions. You must follow who you are as a true individual, and it is not the law that makes you so. It is only the law that guides you and gives you a guideline. Do you understand this? Now, yeah. Abraham, sure, yourself and myself, we're all in the same bloodline. You were someone in the past that was related to me, related to Abraham, and now you and Sheer are now people on this planet, on this time, that have relationships with people of the past and people you've known the Christ uh, entity many times and you've known the bloodline of David many times. Are you aware of this? Absolutely. And Sheer, are you aware of this? He is now. That is your connection. You are you are Men of the law. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. And to me, the law is love. Exactly. It, you see, it is not a bunch of rules and regulations that you must follow. It is a guideline of how love should act. But you must not let it be solid. You must not let these exact words come into your life and be set in stone, so to speak. Although in the past, they were set in stone so that the wayward would not go astray. In this day and age, they are there for you to look at and know that some of it will resonate with who you are in this lifetime and some of it is just a guideline for how to live your life. Does this answer your question? It, it, it does. And to expand on that, how to check my understanding, is I'm getting that the love is going to be the same in every now, but how Correct. we apply how we apply the love in this now, in this given situation, will be different. Correct. And the reason that you will apply it differently is your connection to God is different. You're not going through the law. 
You're not going through people. You're going direct. Which is what this age of Aquarius is all about, is direct connect. It's a direct connection. And this will change much because those that must connect through people or through words or through the law will have a, a sketchy connection. The only way to have the best connection, the only connection, is direct. Yes, I, and I'm connecting in with Sheer and I still sense he wants some, can you talk, talk directly to Sheer and... Yes. The love that you are going to show to the world will come directly from God. It will not come from a book, a belief, a thought process, other people, dogma, or anything. The guidelines of the law which you have been taught will fall away because they're not necessary if you're directly connected to God. If you're directly connected to God, how is it that you're going to break all those laws that are written? You're going to want to follow. You're going to want to be like him. You're going to want to emulate that spirit which you feel inside, which is you. Also, you are the unique person that he made you. So therefore, your uniqueness will only be as great as it can be through the direct question direct connection to God. Also, do you realize that most of your brain is not being used? Why is that? Your soul is connected to the brain and opens up those portions of the brain that need to be opened for your particular uniqueness. And so if you connect directly to God, God's connection to you will open up those passageways in the brain that you need to carry out those things that your uniqueness is all about. But remember, your uniqueness is in love, and love is the only way to carry out your uniqueness. Does that answer your question better? Excellent. Thank you so much, David. Sheer, my brother Sheer and I give deep gratitude. Much love. Very well. Namaste. And I will move on. Much love to you. As that expression tells me, that there is much love to give. Can you answer one more question? Or do you have time? Yes. Okay, Christine, do you want to go ahead? Greetings and blessings, David. Greetings, Christine. Um, I'd like to know, um, is the bloodline you're referring to on the female side or the male side? Because you it could always goes through tell. females as well. You can be a bloodline of Christ, of David, of Adam, of Moses. Yes, females are in the bloodline as well. In fact, they are the creators. They're the ones that the males and females are born from. So yes, you are in the bloodline as well. How can you not be? Thank you, David. You're welcome. And, okay. and it is I beautiful had... that the female is part of the bloodline because they have a wisdom within them that is different than the wisdom of man. They are created unique. God has given them the psyche of the female in the mother-father-God aspect. The female is that side of God that is to offset the male and to bring him into question and to bring everything into alignment because there is the, the differences and uniquenesses that God has and the different aspects of himself are so much and varied but have many many purposes because ah can you ride can you ride a turtle into town no you must ride a horse or some being 
or some animal that is meant to be ridden. However, the turtle has its place as well. You see the differences in all the unique things that God created and the different aspect of female in the line of David does not make her any less holy, but makes her unique in the fact that she can create and bear fruit that males cannot. Wonderful. All right, I have just one more question from Bianca. She can't speak, though, so I will just read it for her. And she asks if she has a connection to you or Jesus and the lineage, and if there are any messages for her. The message for you is not to lose faith or not to listen to those voices around you. Because the voice inside is the strongest and the loudest and the most correct. You are on the right path. And you have the connections to the lineage that are necessary. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. And now we will let you go. If there are no questions in the room there with you. Yes. No one can hear you without speaking into this page. Oh, yes. Okay, David, are there any questions in the room there with you? Yes, he is named David. Hello. Um, Speak into this. Is there, uh, is there any messages for me? Are we in the same lineage? What, what kind of messages? Might... The lineage of David is quite expansive because he has brothers, sisters, and relatives that reach down through the generations. The tree has many, many branches. And yes, you are on one of the branches. The message for you is to come close to the base, the roots of the tree, so that you may be fed directly. Because at this time you are being out in the wind at the ends of the branches, and the, the wind is moving from side to side, and sometimes that's very frightening. And you must get the message that there is stability at the root of the tree. Do you understand this? Oh, no. I know that you will get the, the, the uh, words that you need to understand. But right now, you need the stability. You need not to be out in the wind blowing on the branches, but you need to be close to the trunk, close to the tree, close to the roots, and feed directly from the, the earth and Mother Nature and Mother Earth. And this is the message for you because this will bring you the nutrition in the life that you need. I know it's all symbolic, but it will be explained to you. Much love to you. And I see that you move from the being in the wind to being near the tree. And this is much more stable. Namaste. Namaste. Okay, thank you, David. And if there are no thank more you. we have it no was, questions here, so we will let you go. It was a joy to be with you. I think more of you should take my example of one thing. Do not care about what the people think about you. I know when I danced before the people, they said I was naked, but I was wearing something. Not much. But I danced before the people as a king. Why? I wanted to show my love for God. I wanted to show my reckless abandon for obeying him, for my love for him, for my truth that he had given to me. And so I danced before the people and did not care what they thought. Do you remember this? Perhaps you have not read the Bible. But I danced before them and all my relatives were embarrassed. They thought... Oh, how shameful that he danced before the people and before God 
wearing nothing but a loincloth. But I was showing my true nature, my true God image. It was thankful, joyous, loving, kind, and did not care what anyone thought. And the outcome of that was great blessing, great joy and love. Do you understand this? Do not care what other people think. If God tells you to dance before the crowd and give praise to him, that's what you should do. I think that is a lesson for the world you live in today because there is so much pulling inward, so much embarrassment, so much put on you from other people, so much shame and guilt. Set it free. Find the truth of love within you, the purity of that love, the goodness, so that you do not care that you let it out. You can let it out and not be ashamed. Because your connection to God, as I was speaking earlier, is direct. And who can tell you that you are not doing the right thing if you obey the will of God, the love of God, the light of God, that's directly beamed into your soul? I bid you a great day. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming today. <laughs> it would appear <laughs> that my time has been shortened. <laughs> this is the one called Buddha. Oh, so nice. I to was going you. to teach about the third eye in a little more depth today. However, I think my time has been shortened, and I don't know if I have time to do that. But let me say this. Many have conceptions about the third eye that may not be true. Oh, yes. It does have to do with clairvoyance and seeing the things that are beyond the realm of third dimension. It does have to do with seeing and, and creativity and the very idea of understanding all the things of spirit that you were once confounded by. As the third eye opens, your understanding of spirituality, the world, and all things are opened unto you, not just other dimensions and other uh, other beyond senses, <coughs> but also the world that you live in becomes much more clear, becomes much more livable because you can understand it. And so therefore, when you are intending for the third eye to open, intend all these things. There's so many connections with the third eye, not just with the supernatural. <laughs> the supernatural is part of it, but not all of it. So therefore, make sure that you are looking at all the things that the third eye brings. All the things. Remember, it'll help you understand yourself as well. It also under gives you greater health. Why? Why is opening the third eye bringing health? Because it is an energy 
that comes from God, that the third eye is a natural energy that is part of all bodies. It comes from outside, it comes from inside, and it lightens up that, you see, the color of that chakra, what color is it? Indigo. What color is that? It is a deep, deep, dark blue. Deep. Almost black. But as the third eye opens, it sheds a light on that, doesn't it? That is the eternity. The void. All the things that are that come together to make that darkness or dark color. But yet, when the third eye opens to a certain point, it refuses to accept that it is only one color. <laughs> it is the culmination of all the colors before it. If you put them all together, <laughs> it's going to be a very dark color, is it not? But this color tells you that it is of a wise place. God is in the void. God is in the silence. God is in the nothing. There is no such thing as nothing because God is there. Think about that. People say nothing. There is nothing there. But that's not true because there is always something in the nothing. It could be the tiniest speck. But also God is there because <laughs> he is there for, with everything at all times. I'm, I'm like getting sidetracked. But let me tell you there is effects on the body when the third eye opens. There's definite effects. Your, you become lighter. Your endocrines, your, there are so many systems. I, I'm not even sure the name of them all in your, in your vernacular. But I know that it is vast. And below the base of the neck, there's something there. Is it the hypothalamus? I think it is. And it is much affected. That is the word, your hypothalamus. And the thalamus is below that, I believe. And these are affected. They open up different things for different people. They are part of your individuality. They are part of the collective individuality. They are part of the collective uh, system of energy. Does that make sense to you? I'm not going to get finished with this all today, I don't think. But let's continue. Is there any questions so far? Yes, there is. Sarah, would you like to go? Yes. yes. Hello, Buddha. Welcome. And much Thank love. you. I have a question about my third eye, and I'm actually happy you came today. Um, this week I experienced, I sort of saw myself opening my third eye, and there was some sort of vibrational wave coming out of it as I was yes. honing. Um, a, 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 like a very deep sound. Ah, beautiful. Well, you know, the sound of the third eye is... Mm, that is the sound that opens the third eye. It is a toning sound. It's the... Mm. Now, you've heard of the OM. That is yes. the sound of the sun, the vibration of it. The, su the sound the sun makes in the sky, in the, in the solar system. If you were to record the sound of the sun, it would be... Um, um, 
understand how is it that ancient humans were able to detect that sound and know that it was of the sun. It is a gift when you are in tune, when the third eye is in tune with yourself and all those things around you. It is open to the universe and all the sounds that are in the universe and all the things that are in the universe and they could sense that. And mm, is part of the OM. You understand that? And yes, I understand why that happened to you because it is making you aware that this is universal. This is gigantic. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but what about the vibrational wave coming out of my third eye? That is part of the mmm. That vibration that's coming out is part of the sound, is part of all things. It will, that sound that comes out of the third eye will create the vibration of the room to be the same as it is coming out of the third eye. All those things will become the same. All that vibration in that room will be the same. Why? Because it is connecting in a universal way to everything around it. Do you understand that? I'm getting it. Okay, so as I'm toning, I would be using my third eye at the same time. And yes, and that is wonderful. And let me tell you what that does. I have all, I'm already starting to explain it to you. It connects everything in the same vibration. Now, why is that important? It is because so that everyone can feel the same thing, can understand the same message, can heal with that vibration, if that is your intent. Why is the OM so beautiful? Why is the mmm so beautiful? Is because it brings all into oneness with God. Ah, I get it. I've done that sound, actually, during my toning. I've done that sound. So thank you. Yeah. I, I have a clear idea of what it's... Uh, it brings everything. everything into oneness. Yeah. And the third eye vibration brings yourself. It, it changes the vibration of self as well. Because you are in one place, and when the third eye speaks with its vibration, then it brings things into oneness. The whole body is at peace and is at one. Thank you for that. That's, that's lovely. You are welcome. Now, let me tell you, that is the sound of the third eye, is the um, the um sound. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it is the vibration that brings things into oneness. Mm -hmm. Now, the third eye has elements all around that can help you to help it open. Do you, are you aware of this? Are you aware that jasmine is an odor that can help the third eye open? Jasmine is the scent for the third eye. What is the stone to use for the third eye? Well, for this day and age, it's amethyst. It also can be lapis. Mm -hmm. These things, these elements are one with the third eye. They have the vibration that will come into oneness with the third eye. Does that make sense to you? So these things have already been in tune to your third eye vibration, so that when you start to open your third eye, and you have these things around you, it helps because they are helping. They are helping with 
your intention, with your purification, with your love, with your understanding that all things in the universe, stones, odors, vibrations, planets, Jupiter is also the third eye's planet. Were you aware of that? Why is Jupiter the third eye's planet? It has a huge eye on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is not really the reason, but I always remembered it because of that. Mm -hmm. I can see the planet and see the big eye. But the, it... What I'm trying to say about it is that Jupiter, that if you would intend that it help you open your third eye, that planet is geared to the third eye. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know, but it is. God has made it that way. There are so many things and elements and thought processes connected to the third eye. Is there more questions? Yes. Come closer. Is the third eye to be open all the time, or is it um, just during times that you need it? No. The third eye is open gradually. It does not open fully for one moment to give you one thing and then close again. What happens with the third eye is that it starts to open with your the beginning of enlightenment. And as you learn and grow in spirit, love, understanding, the third eye grows open a little more and a little more and a little more. Now, will it ever be fully opened? If it is, you are one of the wisest and greatest people that ever lived because it is not to be opened entirely until probably the end of your life. But there are people with their eye, third eye wide open, and it was because of drug induction, psychological problems, things of this nature that were not quite natural for them to experience. I'm not sure I could go into that much further, but if you would look at it, a heroin addict, and there are machines that can look at the, the different chakras that you have nowadays. You will see that a heroin addict's third eye is all the way open. But does that help them? No. What it does is that they are living in, an, in a world that is horrific. They sense, see, feel everything that is beyond as well as everything that is within and everything that is around. You will find that some drug addicts whose third eye are all the way open are in extreme torture. Have you ever experienced anyone that is going through that? It is extreme torture. To open the third eye without the right guidance, without the right purity, understanding, and love, and without God's will to be part of it. Thank you, is there, Buddha. Uh, is there we a have question? a couple of yeah, I have a couple of questions from members. Um, yes. From member Slava says, uh, "Excuse him if uh, it's not appropriate question, but he wonders about your perspective. He would like to ask about remembering and consciousness memory. Could you please share your perspective on its aspects?" I'm sure many of us have our own perspective why it's happening this way, but in your perspective, why would it happen in such a way at this time? Perhaps it's not appropriate time for us to remember specifically our visitations to the colonies or remember more about ourselves and share this world at this time. Is it God's will or our subconscious decision or someone else's impact? Um, he understands that it's a relative question in many ways, but how yes. do you see this from your perspective? I see this. This is a beautiful and wonderful question. I see that many aspects of it that he is looking at. He is looking at it from very, very many different angles. 
But let me say this. When the third eye opens and you start to understand who you are and start to perceive who you are and start to understand the things around you and the things beyond, it must come slowly. It cannot all flood in. It cannot be a huge flood of information. So therefore, you are given pieces, bits, and things and clues of the next step in your evolution of the third eye. Now, as it opens, you start to understand more. You start to remember more. You start to feel more. You start to see beyond more. So as you grow in the spirit, now there are times when the third eye goes back closed. Why? You fall into disbelief that God is helping. You fall into a third dimensional situation that smacks you so hard that you can't see beyond and, and the third eye closes. But it can be opened again. But as it opens, slowly and only slowly, then you will start to get the information that you need. Start to remember the things that you need to remember. And sometimes in this reality, third dimension, you, you do not want to remember everything. You do not want to experience everything. You do not want to know beyond a lot of things. And so therefore you are taken at a certain pace through the opening of the third eye so that you will become wise if it opened too quickly. Your wisdom would not be there. You would not understand what is happening. You would not perceive things correctly. Does that make sense to you? The perception is important. The way that you perceive and the way that it happen, happens are important, especially each of you are individuals, unique in your own special way, and for you to rush that, it would not be a pretty thing. You can't go from zero to 100 as far as living the human life without consequences. An accident, for sure. Is there Thank any more questions? Does that yeah, answer your question? That answer does sufficiently for Slava, I believe. Um, Sam, Sam S. has a question uh, about his spiritual experience here. He says, um, his forehead had a lot of pressure last night, and I assume that he's talking about the third eye area. And he says yes. he felt very nauseous. Uh, then he said an overwhelming emotion came through and he began to cry and he's asking was this part of his third eye trying to open or was it something else? No, this was a release. This was a release of something that needed to fall away from him and yes it was part of the third eye opening. Let me explain. As we shed our negativities and our toxins and the things that do not belong within us and the third eye can open a little bit more yes I ask him this was there a great relief afterwards just find out for me I don't know who it is that but, may take a little bit because he's not online in real time with us. It may take I a see. while. But I am sensing that after this experience, the nausea was the toxins. The pressure on the third eye was that these toxins were keeping the third eye static. Static meaning there are not opening still. And after this wave of nausea, there was great tears and emotions and a falling away of these things that did not belong. He may not even be aware of what that was. But he has been looking spiritually for an, a greater experience in the spirit. And so that was something that was a step forward.
Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I just realized that Sam is here. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. Sam, can you unmute and uh, and speak? Yes. Thanks, Dan. You hear did me? you feel, did you feel a great relief after the tears? Yes, I did. That is because something fell away. Did I, did you hear the explanation that I gave of what happened? Uh, yes, I did. Thank you. And did that did you understand it or did it make sense to you? Yes, it makes sense. There is something in your life that was burdening your your entire life, actually, in, in, in your body, in some way. And whatever it was, finally you realized you didn't need it any longer, and it passed. Okay. I got it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Buddha. That was a beautiful thing. And yes, your third eye did open more. Okay. Is there any other questions about that? I, uh, I sense that there is something else. Yeah, I have a lot of questions, but I'm a little uh, all choked up right now, so I, I can't really talk. Well. But I'll go ahead and pass on the mic. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Love you. Continue on your path. You are making progress. That was beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Buddha. Carolina has a little question here that she would like to know what is the wavelength of the ohm? The wavelength of the ohm, I do not know what it how many megahertz or whatever it is that you are looking for, but it is when it comes out, when you do the ohm, when you experience it, when you create it, it is exactly the way it should be. So you do not have to worry about what what its frequency is at that moment. You only have to worry about creating it coming up out of the soul. It will cause a great oneness to occur if you continue it long enough. And the more that you go, the longer that you go with the ohm, the greater it extends out. It keeps, it puts that vibration on everything. That exact vibration becomes the intensity, the atmosphere of the room, of the place, of the walls and the ceilings and the floors, of the pictures on the wall, of all the people that are there, especially if they're ohming with you and sharing in with the vibration. But even if they don't share, it will come to them and it will seep through the surface of their being until they feel one with the room, one with the all. It's just a matter of time. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Dan? Yeah, I have a couple of more questions from members. Um, this one from John Lee. Um, she says it's her understanding from the oracle of Ephesus that we are to somehow unite your bowl of love within us with the Christ within us. Is this cool. so from your perspective and are her attempts to do so progressing? So she's asking is she connecting with her, uh, her Christ within in uh, what she might consider a what, what they're saying is they're they're wanting you to take the physical and unite it with the spiritual. Yes, the Om does that. There are several different things to do that. The bowl of love is the physical love that you feel, the physical part of love. You feel the emotions. You you have touch. You have sensation. The bowl of fire. And that, connected with the spirit, which is also a fire, becomes a great flame. You can connect them together. Now, the soul and God are one. And that fire comes directly from God. We are, in this day and age, as you are experiencing, this is the new age of 
experiencing how God is. And this bowl of fire is the physical, and the soul is the, the spiritual. And yes, they can be connected. And your intention is important. And when you do connect them, there will be realizations about the physical and the spiritual. You will find that the spiritual speaks to you, your body, and your body speaks to your spiritual. And you, will, you are intensified in both. Does that make sense to you? Because yes. the flames have united, you see. The flames have united. If she has any more questions, I can uh, follow up with her and explain uh, more, more thoroughly. I am truly happy about these questions. They are making me happy. Come and speak. There is a person in the room that wants to speak. I have a, uh, you mentioned that people that did heroin experienced the opening, and I have a friend that was a former heroin user, and uh, she moved away, and I heard through spirit that she was experiencing psychological problems, and I'm wondering how would I be able to help her heal, send healing energy to her? What, in okay. what kind of way would I do this? Once someone is taken away from the drug, the third eye is still open, and it's causing a great amount of sensations to bombard the body, mind, soul, and spirit, because you're, it's not from one place, it's from all places. It's coming from the earth, it's coming from third dimension, it's coming from beyond, because the third eye does control the, the experiences from beyond. It's from psychic energy as well, from the brain and all these things. And so once the drug is removed, the, the psychological damage has already get, been done. The eye may start to close slowly, but they must understand that they have to give up the information that they've received. Does that make sense to you? They have to, they have to take it away in the sense that it's not important at this time. But yet, whenever the third eye is open, everything seems important. All this information seems very, very important. And it, they have no choice but to see it. They have no choice. The third eye is all the way open, so the information is coming. But it seems so important, they can't give it up. And this is what causes the psychological problems to remain, is because they can't close it again. They, they, they have a difficulty not receiving. Do you understand that? But if they could start to close it, if they could just block it in some way, and I'm not sure they do have some psychological blockers, some drugs in this day and age that does do these kind of things. But does it close the third eye? I am not sure. I have not experienced that, and I do not have that information right at the moment. Because I, all that I know is that once it's all the way open, it's so very difficult to close. Mm, Any more questions? You, so you know, I have a quick question, if I can. Yes. Um, my name is Valerie, and Valerie. I would like to know if anyone has the capability of being uh, or holding uh, the history of the Akashic Records. No one has enough space in their memory banks to hold the Akashic Records. You must understand what the Akashic Records are. They're every second, every planet, every part of everything that ever existed. That is, one second of information is too much for a human 
to hold in their brain. One second of the Akashic record will flow over and explode your brain because it is too much to hold. You are not made to hold the Akashic records or the memories thereof. It is there as a history of the universe and of all things at every moment, and every bit of time. And you wouldn't want that anyway. There's too much information. And it cannot be used in this lifetime. Only okay. so much information can be used by your unique perspective and life. And your unique perspective of life has a purpose. And the Akashic Record has 20 billion, billion, trillion, trillion purposes. And you only have one. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it would not be even advisable to do a second. That makes sense. You understand that? Yes, I do. I love you dearly, but that kind of information is destructive. Yes, I can imagine. Um, also, I had another quick question here on yes. that same on that same uh, frequency. Um, if, nice. if this is there any way a person can revoke? Uh, any type of DNA things that would change their life now. Does that make sense? Like um, contracts, you mean, things like that. Uh, let me ask you a question first and see okay. if I understand the question. Do you mean after you've received some DNA, is there any way to get rid of it? Yes. Or do you mean, is there any way to, if it's someone wants to give it to you not to accept it? Yeah, both. Once you've received some DNA, it's difficult to get rid of it. It can be done. It can be done, but it is not an easy process. The other thing is, if there is DNA that someone wants to give you, you do not have to accept it. It's very easy. It's a matter of free will. All you have to say is no. It's not difficult. They cannot force it in. Unless they're doing an operation and cutting you open and put it, injecting DNA, but that is not happening. What is happening is you are, can only take the DNA if you accept it. If you do not want it, do not accept it. Because after you have it, it's difficult to get rid of. That's great to hear. And it's great information. Um, is there any way that a person can, uh, like, are you given contracts, so to speak, before you come to Earth? Are we all given contracts that we are? 99.9% uh, .9 of people on Earth have a contract before they come here because they have made it, and there is a reason for that. And they have contracts for their future, and they want, because they, they continually want to learn and grow and become greater beings. You see, as, as you progress through your different lifetimes, your brain opens up more and more and more, and you become more godlike. But it's a progression because you, like, uh, it's a progression towards God. You'll never reach him because he's always learning more and creating more and doing more. But it is a progression toward a godlike existence. It's a beautiful thing. So there really would be no need to revoke any of those contracts then? Not unless it interfered with, well, no, there wouldn't be any. But there are some people that change their contracts for one reason or another. They're, they're tired of learning certain things a certain way. There are no negative things attached to those contracts, though. Is that correct? No, not... not once you make a contract, it's the, it may seem negative once you're down here, like pain, sorrow, suffering. But when you're in the oversoul, it's not negative. It's a learning experience. It's let me feel that. Let me know that so that I can help somebody else with it. It's actually very positive. 
Well, that's wonderful. And again, very good information. I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you, Buddha. Much love. And I'll pass the Much mic now love. to Dan. Dan. Buddha, I have a question about the third eye, the whole third eye experience thing. So for those people who who the third eye is just words, like they, they've heard of the third eye, they, they're not quite sure what it is, how it is, where, where it's located. So the third eye is like the pineal gland projection at the forehead. And then is there something that you can share with like the more lay people, the, the more beginner people of how they can really tap onto it, how they can really begin to use it in their favor, how they can really mm -hmm. begin to get things rolling and, and help them with their spiritual growth? Can you, can you maybe say something yes. to help those earlier folks? Well, let me tell you this. The third eye is never completely closed unless you're dead. It has to be open a slight bit for you to be able to perceive, to understand. It, you may not be going into beyond dimensions with the third eye being only open a small way, but you're perceiving third dimension. You're perceiving your life, your body, the way you perceive it at that time. With the, with the third eye just slightly open because it is the center of perception. It is what it is on the level of spirituality as well. If it's only open a little bit, you can only perceive so much spirituality. And some people believe that they're very spiritual, but their third eye is only open this much, and they're perceiving spirituality in such a small way. And even a small bit of spirituality is huge. You must understand that. To understand even the smallest bit of spirituality is lovely and beautiful. But to help them jumpstart their third eye is to know that it exists, number one. Without the knowledge that it exists, there's no way to open it. I mean, any farther than it's open. And after they believe that there is such thing as a third eye and that it can be opened, then you seek ways to open it. And that is a voyage for each person. No one takes the same voyage opening the third eye. Everyone has their own unique way to perceive their life and to make it better if they can. So therefore, I cannot give you a path except for to say, seek and you will find, which you've heard before. But it is true. But your ways of seeking, some people look in books and read different things. Some go to a guru and have readings. Some uh, pray and ask God. Some meditate. There's many, many ways to take your path. Some do very little about it. But they'll, they'll say, all right, I have a third eye. So what? What good is it doing me? I live here. I'm, I'm having an okay life, so why change anything? So there is another path to take, the path of indifference. But if it is... Your third eye, which it is, is open just that little bit. It's like opening a pistachio shell. Do you know, you see them, you see that there's something in there, but sometimes it's very difficult to get to it. You understand that? So, and other pistachios, it's easy. They just break right open. Depending on your belief systems, depending on how you want to perceive it. It can be a very difficult journey, or it can be a much easier journey. That's all up to you. Would it be simple enough to just say they could just give their third eye some attention, maybe give it a little focus, maybe get into a light meditative state, maybe do some om okay. or something? Could they just begin Whatever. giving it some attention, and then that could um, could blossom and grow into a, a really good connection as they feel their way through their third eye? Absolutely. Whatever they choose to do, whatever is exciting 
for them because if the path is not exciting, it's not going to be taken. If the path is too tedious, then no one will will walk it. Okay. So awesome. yes, find something that interests them. That is what I'm saying. They must find their own spot of interest, their own place to begin, their own place where that says, "All right, this is something I'm interested in." Something that might be very helpful. So it sounds like provided as long as they would give their third eye some focus, maybe make a little time for it, and then follow their inner guidance from there, then they should be well on their way to uh, growing into whatever they're going to be then. Depending on their belief systems, absolutely. Awesome. Wonderful. I think that, that might do them quite well. Thank you. Thank you, Buddha, for helping me with those. It appears I had more time than I thought. Oh, yes, it's okay, Buddha. Um, Jeremy is a new member just joining with us today. Very Jeremy, well. would Hello, you have Jeremy. any questions? Would you like to unmute and speak? Yes. Yeah, I just want to know if my, if my gray who is basically what he say, says he is, and if he's basically going to help me to um, help me awaken the earth. From the from the fake reality. I'm not sure I understood the question. Something about helping you is something going to help you. What what was going to help you? No, I was saying, is my gray say says who he who he says he is to be. His gray alien. He's got a gray alien being ah, that ah, uh, that visits with him, and he alien. wants to know if it's uh, if it's uh, valid. One moment, please. And I will connect to that. Does he have a name? Yeah. And what is that name? I called him Zef, but his real name is is um uh, Elysio. Elysio or something. But I can't pronounce it. He is real. Huh? He is real. He is real. He okay. is real. And he is there for your best interest. He is one of one of the type of greys called Alien Shondai Zendi. He's yeah. from that the Alia Shondai Zendi. They are helpful greys. And he does care about you. I am not sure of exactly what he wants to teach you. But he feels that you have a great purpose. And he is there to help you. Yeah. I just want to know if he, if he, he says who, he's, you know, who he really is, basically. If he's. Who he says he is. Huh? Yes. Okay. Um. There. There is a lot of noise coming from somewhere. Oh, it's just me walking around, sorry. Oh, that is all right. Um, well, yeah, I just want to... Because um, a lot of people have been saying that greys are evil. And, uh, and I was just Not all greys are evil. There are good greys and there are bad greys and there are neutral greys. And Elias Shondai Zendi are one of the ones that have come into the area within the last, I would say, maybe eight months, seven months, into yeah. your earthly atmosphere in a very big way. They were yeah. there before, but they were only in a very small number. Okay. Um, I just, um, I don't know, I'm supposed to have a this is not right. I said I come from them. I cannot hear you over the noise. He said that, um, he said that uh, basically my definition is to help me. Yes. But I don't know what to help me. It says to help me wake everyone up because everyone's afraid of them and it's just to help them with that. But I don't know if it's, you know, true or if it's part yes. of something. Yes, he's there to help you, and 
what he says is true, and um, there must be something about you that he really has connected to. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it is a loud sound. I'm not sure what you're doing. Are Jeremy have some background noise? Yeah. There's so much. Oh. Noise. Jeremy, oh, sorry. Can you do the thing where you don't move your device around while you speak because we cannot hear your voice at all. Okay, hey, sorry. Um, I just got a lot of family here at the moment. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I was just um, yeah, but that's what that's what I want to know. And to if he's. And present if he's because it doesn't seem to show himself to anyone. I don't know if I'm just, if he's um. That's all right. If he shows himself to you, has he shown himself to you? By the way. Um yeah, I drew pictures on my um my profile page. Ah, very interesting. Well, he is sh has shown himself to you then, and do not do not um push him away. He is a good friend. He's trying to be a good friend. And he's okay, not evil. Okay. Yeah, because that's the thing. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Because I just feel really scared, and I don't know what to trust. And I hear these no, stories. He about is not evil. Okay. Yes, you've heard stories about bad greys. There are bad greys. Zeta greys, for the most part. There are some good Zeta greys, but they're rare. And there's some other greys that are not so good as well. But the Eliashorn Dizendi are very nice. In some, in many senses, yes, they have their quirks, of course, but they are not evil. Is there any other questions? Thank you, Jeremy. We appreciate the questions you asked, and and they were answered. Okay, I'm moving on now. I don't believe we do have any more questions for you, Buddha, unless there's any more Wait, in the room with you. Room Can you ask? Here. Yes. There's one in the room here. Okay, that's good. Can we ask them? Is there, uh, is there anything that you can share with me that will help on my life path journey? Any guidance that will help me along? The one thing I can tell for everyone is to follow that, that which resonates with you. Now if you find that reading is the way that resonates with you to find truth, then do that. If you find that having readings and talking to those read others that have truth within them resonates with you, that is the way to go. For you personally, I would say that you must find, well you, you have already find a, found a way that resonates with you very well. You speak to Yeshua. Yes. And Yeshua resonates with you very highly. And so he is helping you now. And if if someone else someone else may find Yeshua to be a very good help. Or they may find that I'm a good help. Or they may find that Confucius is a good help. Or they may find that the spirit of David is the good help. But whatever Whatever it is that resonates with you, the truth will resonate in you for yourself. The perfect connection to you and God must be found. If there is not a pure connection, then you will not be your true self in this life. Does that make sense to everyone? Is there any other questions? No, I don't believe we do have any more questions today, Buddha. Uh, if we could get a blessing, maybe, from you before you leave, that would be wonderful. Uh, I would be so happy to give you a blessing. Very, very happy to. Wonderful. We would really appreciate that today. One moment, please. Ah, uh, there is so much light in the universe. But can it all be seen at once? No. Grab a hold of the God light. That is your portion. Which is a great deal at this time. 
and hold tightly to it so that you may grow and be blessed. God wants no one to live a life of horror, terror, and trouble. However, there are contracts that do have some trouble in them. But there's still joy to be found even within those troubled times. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of all the joy that you can find. I give you now a blessing from the past which reaches far into the future. May God be with you in his ultimate and omnipotent power. May his light always shine on you even in those dark days where you feel that you can't even find him. Let your belief system know that he is still there. Find a moment every day to stop and thank him for the beauty that is around you or any one small bit of blessing that has been given. Always thank him every day. Bring your light in line with his light and find the love that is in line with his love and live a wonderful and gratifying life because even if you have trials and tribulations to go through, you still have a purpose for being here. Every single person has a purpose. May you all find it and live it to the greatest of your ability. May love guide you, light and God's infinite knowledge and wisdom be with you always. Amen. Mm, namaste. I will leave you now. Thank May you so all much. have a wonderful day. I'm so happy to have been here with you. Thank you so much, Buddha. Much love. See you again soon. Much love. Much love. Thank you. Oh, welcome back, Jim. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello, Jim. Yes, get a drink. Oh my goodness, you must mm -hmm. be dry. Hey, Jim. Hey, hello. How are you? Good, good. Well, you oh, good. Uh, channeled through several different entities for your first time back. Um, back with a boom. <laughs> back with a boom. Great I, job. Oh, thank you. And I hope our, everyone got something out of that. Well, I know yeah. that um, a lot of people benefited from that. The questions today were very good and all-encompassing. And we oh, appreciate that. Um, it does give so much information to everyone listening, too. When we concentrate on uh, what's good news for everyone and not just ourselves, and we do appreciate everyone being so kind and generous and getting out and letting others in for, so that we can rotate through. And um, well, everyone who nice. had Thank their questions. Much. Yes. Yes, everyone Thank who wrote all. in had questions. Um, I hope they all got answered. Um, Jim, we so appreciate your time and everybody there that was with you. And so oh, happy to have you back healthy. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll talk again soon. I'll yes, be back next do week. Do we have any messages or any announcements there? Um, no, I'll just be back next week. I'm not sure where yet, but I'll be back next week for sure. Okay. Dan, Maybe did you have any? 
I uh, know we have the uh, Hot Springs meetup coming up in June, uh, the 18th to the 25th, I believe. Uh, I want to give my apology for not being able to post the links on the humancolony.org site. I've been having uh, issues with my browser, etc., and other things, but I did get the link posted everywhere else. Um, Reiki class for the Reiki 3 people will begin Monday. At noon. At noon Eastern, be 11 oh, Central. Oh, wonderful. I believe I would like to be involved in that, too. So if somebody could send me the link for that, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and we do have some blessings coming up. We have Sarah here that I believe she has a blessing for us. Would you like to take over, Sarah? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. Shalantaya ishulu kaya tia tiokoto shutu kayana ki ashalana tia sia tu atia sakanaya koloto tia si kushunu nai ataya tuni tia suku kalotuku atia saya ilotuku shana asalatoku Tia Tanakiasa Koto Nini Asikalata Kushi Tanakia Niki Ulu Tulu Ni Asayanaka. Wisdom is not just a word but an action. Put into action the wisdom that you have. Make sure that you move in ways that are acceptable to God and to all people. But within yourself you know what is right and wrong. Therefore act upon those things that you know to be right for yourself. With much love I bring you a great message. And the message will bleed out through the, the years in your life so that you may understand exactly who you are in God. Thank you. And the Arcturians are chiming in. Do not be careless with your words. Make sure that when you speak, you know of what you speak of, and it is the truth. There are times when we are deceived, but let it be known in your heart that those things that are not true cannot resonate truly. So be aware of all things. Be aware of who you are in the truth, and speak it only at all times. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you again, Jim. We appreciate all your help, all your health. <laughs> I appreciate my health too. We missed you. We missed you more than we can say. And we are so happy to have you back again. And your smiling face has just brought such wonderful energy to everyone today. Well, and it was so good to see you all. And, yes, so um, you go take love. care of yourself now. <laughs> Hope Rest. to see you all soon. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And I uh, love you. Love oh, you, Jim. Love you too, Jim. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.